So gross motor versus fine motor skills in a street fight or self-defense. Which is better? Which works? Well, we're going to find out. So here, boom, what is gross motor? This is a crazy way to start. Isn't it? <laughs> gross motor skills. Look, when it really comes to a fight, what's going to happen? Are you going to get fine motor actions or are you going to get gross motor actions? The reality is you're going to get gross motor actions because when it comes to the stress and anxiety that you experience in a fight, you're going to get a lot of people that are just going to swing for the hills. Even if they're fine motor, and fine motor is defined by, uh, let me give you an example. If you throw a punch and I cover this way, throw another punch, and I cover this one, I laugh, go and throw another punch, I cover this one and move up like this, and then I roll and I move and I move. Or even more tactile, go, I move like this and I move, I hit, come up and I hit, boom, boom, oh sorry, boom. <laughs> <laughs> I did hit you there, didn't I? <laughs> okay, the, these are what we call fine motor skills. Fine motor skills defined by the fact that they need a lot boom, of movement. Now, it doesn't mean it can't be done for real. It means you have to train a lot harder to actually get that into your system. What you have to be able to do is to train, 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 train. But the reality is when you get into a confrontation, your body is submerged with adrenaline. And what that actually does is it affects the way that you move. And that's why most of the time people move in gross motor fashions. So if you look at a lot of my videos and you'll see when we're moving, I use a lot of flowing ideas where I'm elbowing, elbowing, smashing, kneeing. These are gross motor actions. They're not fine motor. There's a distinction. Because with gross motor, you flow. You can change and you can hit and you can move and you can keep the pressure on the person. With fine motor actions, as I was saying, they're much more subtle. And the subtlety is something that under stress and duress, and this is really what we're trying to talk about, under stress and duress, you're going to find harder to replicate. So, good ways to train it. Well, what you can do is try to get people to pressure test you. They come at you, bang, swinging, okay, which is quite big in itself, because you ought to think that in a street fight, you're unlikely to get someone who's going to pop in, bang, 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 and throw nice tight, slick combinations. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, I said unlikely, because I always go on the, on the pre-front, pre-tense pre idea. Who knows? What am I saying? I don't care. <laughs> the point of what I'm trying to say is, I always go on the basis that most of the time when I'm defending myself, it's likely to be someone that doesn't know what they're doing, just the ordinary guy. Most experienced street fighters, or most experienced fighters, don't fight in the street, right? They get paid to fight. Why are they going to want to fight you in the street? They're not paid to fight you. Not to, there's nothing to be gained. And most people that are quite effective in martial arts and very good don't have an ego to fight anyway. You know, they're ego less. So you're more likely going to face some guy who doesn't know what he's doing, had a few drinks, had a few street fights even, knows what, he knows what he's doing from that perspective, but he's not necessarily a skilled fighter. But when it comes to it, this is the point, Fights come down to gross motor actions. So that's why you'll see a lot of self-defense videos, and we do them as well, based on people throwing clubbing punches, people pushing, people grabbing, because that's what gross motor action is. So you need simple skills to be able to defend yourself. Simple skills being framing. Framing is one that we talk about a lot. If someone tries to grab you, okay, be aware of my threats. If you damage them, you're in trouble. <laughs> okay, framing is one way to keep the guy off you, especially if he's headbutting you. Is headbutting gross motor? Uh, yeah. Yeah, headbutting is yeah. gross motor, right? It's something bang, it's a gross motor action. So here, framing is going to be quite effective. If he's grabbing me and pushing me, of course, framing and bracing with your legs is quite an effective way to deal with that. If, for example, the guy's swinging, again, Framing is also good because it's a bigger action. Anything that's pushing, pulling, and moving as an action and as a self-defense action is well worth exploring and putting into your skill set. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do these fine-tuned motions because they are effective. It just takes longer to ingrain to actually get it to application. And again, if you're looking at being in a situation where, I don't know, do some Wing Chun with me, cross hands with me for a minute. Okay, so I do a tan, you do a tan, I do a shape, I do a shape, I do a shape, you block, and I move, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, okay, you can keep up with me, George. Come on, you're making me look good. You're supposed to make me look bad, that's the point. One, two, okay, a real fight, hey, oh, that was good. I'm a bit rusty, actually, I haven't done this for so long. Bang, 
bounced on his bank for so long. <laughs> a real fight doesn't look like that. Not at all, no. right? Well, <laughs> I know you're like, what the hell? We weren't supposed to be doing this. What a real fight looks like is quite often what George does. He just throws punches at me. It's uncoordinated in the sense that he's just throwing stuff at me and I'm just randomly dealing with it. We don't coordinate our, sh our shoots. We don't co I, usually we start the videos with, you say, what do you want me to do? And I say, I don't know, <laughs> hit me. <laughs> and then we go with that, right? But the point of what I'm trying to explain is that the reality of real fighting is it will be gross motor action. And sure, there's, there's lots of skills that we learn when we practice these sort of things, especially in a Wing Chun context, bang, like I'm learning how to hand fight, control his arms, give him my arms and find these spaces. I'm actually having more fun <laughs> doing this actually, to be honest with you, oh, I'm just going to kind of pin you down. But it's not applicable because real fighting comes down to dealing with gross motor actions and that's really what the point of the video is. So thanks for watching. Thanks for taking a beating, George. It's all right, anytime. <laughs> Big soon. Thanks. <laughs>